Welcome to Crypto Classroom, the number one YouTube channel for learning about cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, and other topics in the cryptocurrency world through easy to understand analogies, stories, and examples. Today, we're going to talk about Ripple, what Ripple Lab does, how XRP actually works, why the SEC has looked into them, and lastly, how their tokenomics work. But before that, we just want to make it clear that this video would contain nothing but facts as we don't push our own opinions or fan speculation. First off, Ripple is a for-profit company that services the banking industry. Ripple Labs is the company while XRP is its product, just like how Google is the company and Android is their product. Ripple Labs' mission is to enable banks and payment providers to send money internationally quickly and cheaply. You may be unaware, sending money from one country to another isn't as straightforward as sending someone an email or a selfie. It often takes days. The fees are usually expensive and in some countries, you need to use means that aren't exactly legal. So this is the problem that Ripple Labs aims to solve. At present, most international transfers are done via SWIFT which is a protocol that handles half of all international money transfers amounting to almost $6 trillion each day. But it takes a lot of times and the fees are pretty high because transfers could involve multiple banks or require currency conversions. Currency conversions can be tricky, so not all banks are able to quickly convert the money being sent without racking up high fees. How does Ripple Labs solve this? First, their first product is something called RippleNet which is now called XCurrent. Essentially, it's the same thing. RippleNet is the network that powers XCurrent. XCurrent is a decentralized system that uses a consensus model called the Unique Node List, which is their answer to the slow transfer via SWIFT. Comply with anti-money laundering rules, and they've even included fraud detection. XCurrent is good at transferring money quickly and more. There are a number of big financial institutions. American Express, along with around 50 other big banks, have joined them. You may think that all of this is complicated and not for everyday transactions, and you may be right. Ripple Labs also started a cryptocurrency called Ripple, which uses the ticker XRP. It's powered by a blockchain similar to many other cryptocurrencies, but with a few key differences. Number 1. Transactions are confirmed in less than 5 seconds with the cost of each transaction is like 2 ten thousandths of a penny. Number 2. The blockchain can handle around 1,500 transactions per second, a lot more compared to other blockchains available. They also claim to be capable of matching the speed at which Visa processes transactions, although we've been unable to find a good technical explanation to this. How does this fit in with the big picture? XRP as a cryptocurrency can run without needing Ripple Labs, but Ripple Labs needs XRP to be able to sell their XCurrent system. Another big difference in the XRP crypto blockchain is that it doesn't use proof of work or proof of stake, which are the two main methods that blockchains usually use to agree on what transactions should be verified and which ones should be blocked. Instead, Ripple uses a method called a unique node list. In basic terms, Ripple Labs sets up a list of people that they trust and then a majority of that list decides what gets added to the blockchain or not. Instead of using proof of work or proof of stake, the majority decision of those on the trusted list becomes final. Before we continue, if you're enjoying this video and learning a lot about Ripple and XRP, we'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and giving this video a like. It certainly helps us a lot in coming up with more of these awesome explainer videos about the world of blockchain and crypto. Back to our topic. Bear in mind that XRP can be divided up into six decimal places and the smallest amount is called a drop, which is 0.0001 XRP. Now, going back to the blockchain, running your validator gives no reward, which got us wondering, why would someone want to participate without a reward unless someone wanted to team up and make fake transactions, which is why there are a lot of people saying that XRP is too centralized. Let's briefly talk about centralization. Recall that one of the biggest benefits of cryptocurrencies is decentralization, which is basically us becoming free of banks that can control all of our money. So if XRP is centralized, why would we use it? From what we understand, 
Ripple Labs has no control of the network after their initial RTXP protocol which powers the XRP cryptocurrency. However, Ripple Labs can maintain it in the same way the nodes of Bitcoin and the Ethereum Foundation can maintain their blockchains and suggest updates. Remember, XRP can run without Ripple Labs, while Ripple Labs' other products need XRP. Now, one of the biggest risks of XRP is the fact that it's possible that a group of validators or those on the unique node list could come together and collude to make fake transactions. Your money could be spent without you agreeing to it. Remember that validators get no reward or mining fee and they're on the list because Ripple Labs decided to include them. Now, let's talk about the SEC having issues with Ripple Labs. The SEC is a federal agency that argues that XRP is actually a security rather than a cryptocurrency, which could actually lead to a huge lawsuit because it will set a precedent for future similar cryptocurrencies. The SEC is of the view that Ripple co-founders are treating XRP as a security like a stock or a bond and if they are, then the regulations around it should change. This is not to say that Ripple Labs is doing something against the law. Rather, it is a reflection of the US government's position that it doesn't like what Ripple Labs is doing. Lastly, we're going to talk about tokenomics. First off, XRP is used as what it takes to spend XRP. Naturally, demand will rise as the coin is used more and more. Second, XRP has a fixed supply of 100 billion coins and supposedly no more coins can be created. Around 20 billion of those went to the founders, 7 billion went to Ripple Labs, and 40 billion were initially sold to companies and individual investors. The rest are given to Ripple Labs each month at a rate of almost 1 billion Ripple per month for a total of 33 months. We've heard that they have an interesting vesting schedule which technically means XRP is slightly deflationary since the fees are burnt and naturally, some people will lose or forget their wallet keys. Before we end this video, we just want to share our thoughts on this because we're wondering why stable coins are not better than XRP at solving slow bank-to-bank -bank transfers. Think about it. Stable coins solve the cross-border problem and if you use a layer 2 scaling solution, the problems of speed and affordability are also solved. More so, stable coins are a little more decentralized depending on which one you use. So we've given you something to think about. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about Ripple, XRP, and what sets it apart from other cryptocurrencies. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and we'll see you in our next video.